I'll remove this temporary base plate. Here is the base plate from the camera, cleaned and ready to go back. It was uh, a challenge getting all the adhesive off this. It softened to a certain extent with acetone, but that wasn't sufficient to get it off. These screw heads are a little bit uh, damaged looking, that's quite normal for screws that have been under leatherettes and therefore have been coated with adhesives and been difficult to remove. See, I'm, uh, I look like I'm short one screw there that I was expecting to see. No, there it is. That's all right. No cause for alarm. Don't panic. I took the opportunity to clean our film advance lever and replace the rubber buffer on the back of it there you go, that doesn't want to turn all the way what's going on there oh, something odd with our advance there, let me See if I can work out what's going on. Do I have any suspects? Not really. mystery. I'll have to uh, investigate. I must have disturbed something. Well no cause for a alarm. It was the spring on the end of the release lever had popped up and was lodged it in against the top of the case so it meant that the release lever couldn't swing smoothly. Once it was positioned back down where it should have been there was no problem. So no serious issues there. Okay, so the base plate's on the bottom of the camera now. That part's good. The rangefinder's my next component, but I could put the covering on instead, I suppose. And do the rangefinder last of all. Oh, decisions, decisions. I'll have a look at the state of the leatherettes and decide whether I want to do them first. Oh, pretty nasty looking. Hmm. They look nice on the outside. I think they were replacement leatherettes when the camera was previously serviced, not original leatherettes. But they certainly need a little bit of cleaning to get rid of all of that green corrosion product, if nothing else. Right, clean the leatherettes then. That'll be my task. Right, let's glue down some leatherettes. Right, let's glue some leatherettes back on the camera.
Yuck. And what's happened to my tube of glue? That doesn't look too good. Let's get that spread out. It's like it's curdled. That's good. Now, yeah, there's two little patches that go on here at that point and at this point they're just little aluminium discs which cover those two positions in the base plate which are not used on the Retina 3S but would have been used on the Retina Reflex S which uses basically the same casting. Let's get rid of that paper that's covered in glue. Get our leatherette in place. As I think I mentioned, the leatherettes looked like they were probably new replacements at some stage when the camera was serviced. And as a result, they are far more pliable and plastic than the leatherettes I'm normally using, which are usually much more dry and uh, but I expect that this is what leatherettes were like when they were still comparatively new they would mould nicely to the camera would not have a tendency to curl up at the edges and would generally be pleasant to work with let's get rid of that thread, we don't want you Just rubbing any glue off on the edges. That looks good. That's a uh, nice piece of leatherette. Right, the film advance lever can go back on. Now the leatherette patch was not on the film advance lever on this camera when I received it, but it was with the camera. It was taped to the uh, case. And here is that leatherette patch. And this leatherette patch does not look new. There's multiple layers of adhesive and very likely that was the original leatherette patch. It sort of suggests that since there are newer leatherettes on the base of the camera and the two front side panels look newish, that whoever serviced the camera had no luck getting those components off in a tidy state or a tidy enough state to reuse. Oh yes, that leatherette patch is much more worn looking than the rest of it. I'll put the back catch release uh, cover in place now I think. 
First I'll need to make sure I've got it clean. Here is its spring. And then after that I'm due a cup of coffee, so I'll have a wee break. Yes, it's a curious mix, this camera, between components which are very clean and in very good condition and components which are quite marked and have obviously had a hard life. Oh, well, that looks a bit better. Almost like a proper camera. You know, I just need to make the rest of the camera match it. Just rub up that excess glue. That's good. So, the leatherette's either side of the front next. And the nameplate. Well, I was able to find a replacement nameplate. So we'll be able to clean that and put that in place. And it'll look much better. At the moment it's a confusing looking camera. It says Retina Reflex S and it's obviously a um, not a reflex. Right, leatherettes for the front of the camera. We can do that. Right, nice even layer of adhesive, not too thick, making sure to cover all the edges. Slide that into position. Making sure all the corners and edges are tucked down. It's nicely centered up. With leatherettes you often get some shrinkage in them so they don't always meet from one edge to the other. So if you're going to be left with a gap, even it out so you've got an even smaller gap on both sides rather than one big gap down one side. and it'll be all but invisible. That's quite good. We still have our crease in the leatherette at that point, but it's by no means as prominent as it used to be. Now for the other piece.
you get better with practice at uh, estimating how much adhesive you're going to need for the leatherette and hopefully squeeze out just enough to do the job properly and not have to go back for a second helping just making sure I've got cover right to the edges and the tissue underneath me, that uh, paper towel is picking up, it's catching my fingers because my fingers have got some glue on them too now, I didn't quite get enough glue on there and um, so the sticky glue on that paper is picking up my fingers. This adhesive being designed as a uh, contact adhesive, it's very good at sticking. Get that leatherette tucked in under that front panel here, this piece then get it settled on the body and then check the line of it with the edge of the body at that point that looks good Well, that's our leatherettes on the front. I think the nameplate could probably go on next. Now the nameplate, like, uh, like most parts, has been recovered from a parts camera. So usually they're less than perfect. But close enough. Certainly good enough for our purposes. Just squeeze out a bit of glue. And apply that to the back of this name plate. Mostly it's sticking at the uh, the end, the K end of the Kodak name. At the other end it's sitting more over a hole in the camera front. There it is. That looks much happier. So at this stage, the camera can be put to one side because what I need to do is prepare my rangefinder and get that ready for installation. Just checking that the edges of that leatherette are stuck down smoothly. That looks good. I pop that body to one side. I've got to clear the decks and get ready to do this rangefinder. And of course, whenever you're dealing with glass, it's got to be everything's got to be very clean. Before I start on the rangefinder, I'd like to get this top cover sorted out. Still deciding what I'm likely to do with this. 
I've had to look through my spares to see if I have any alternative top covers. And I've got this one which is has a smaller dent on the top there, is otherwise fairly tidy and certainly needs to be cleaned, but has a patch of corrosion visible at this point. So I've got to decide, of course it's also completely missing the meter shroud from the top. So I've got to decide which one to use. I'll attempt to clean up the original one. Um, I can possibly push out that little sharp dent there from the other side, or at least lessen it. You can see, I can see by the reflection that that whole piece here is, and I can feel it with my finger, that that's pressed in. And that'll probably press out to a large extent. Well, even just pushing that out with my thumb has made quite a difference to the bulk of it. Just left with that sharp point right there. So I'll have a go at pushing that out a little bit better. But this top cover will certainly need to be cleaned. I can take out those two pieces of glass from the front. I need to clean away all this tape residue. All that red stuff there, which I believe is probably the paint that was used to do the uh, probably used to do that red dot on the shutter there previously. The glass here, or the plastic, is broken. I do have another one here, which is. Uh, in less than wonderful condition but it's in one piece and I think I have some that I made myself which um, may be a good good replacement for that it's very dirty around that window for the meter window uh, I think I need that window out before I attempt to clean that because I want to use some solvent to do that and the meter window will be very unhappy about that. Yes, yeah, so I just pop that window out. That can be lightly cleaned. It looks quite good. This thing is obviously broken. Looking at the state of the case, just at this point here, that line is not flat. It's not straight. It bows down at that point, that means that the camera took a hit to the top. So that's slightly distorted. Uh, that shouldn't cause me a major issue. I'm looking from the end of the top cover. You can see that it's pushed down on this side relative to this side. I'll see if I can straighten that housing up slightly. Mostly I'll be pulling it up at this point here. And that should probably do it. That plastic will need to be replaced. I want to get rid of all that old glue residue from there and all the staining that's around the outside edge. So I'll start cleaning it first because if it's not going to clean up, it's probably not going to be worth trying to salvage it. So I'll start here, just going around that dirty marks on the bottom of the bot the edge there, and that's just uh, dirt and finger grease and similar and it's cleaning off quite well on this face we've got tape residue and whatever that red stuff was and that extends over the lip of the uh, viewfinder window there The solvent seems to be lifting that stuff off.
Yeah, well that looks a lot better. I'll remove the accessory shoe. Taking care not to slip with the screwdriver and mark that top cover or the shoe or the retaining screws. A lot of dirt under there. I think the staining at this window is most likely glue from when the plastic window was glued back in here. And that was excess glue that uh, wasn't cleaned up at the time and has probably since gone brown since that time. It was very likely clear when it went in. Or at least a lot less obvious than it currently is. I'm looking at the edge down here now, seeing what that's like. That's a very thin piece of metal at that point. Um, it's often distorted if this cap's taken a whack, or especially if that cap's had to be replaced. It's very hard to do so without that piece of metal getting distorted. Very thin. Right, I'll see if I can get that glue out from the inside there around that window. I'm going to try a little bit of acetone on that. Well it is moving but I'm not sure whether it's the chemical action of the acetone or whether it's just the fact that it's damp and I'm poking at it with a cotton bud. Let's try some of this. Excuse me. Well that looks looks a lot better around there now. The eyepiece of the viewfinder here, you can see a bit of the silver back through the uh, black anodizing there. That's uh, not uncommon, that just means it's been knocked against something rough. Alright, that's pretty good. I want to see if I can push out some of this obvious misshapen part here. Um, I'll go away down to the shed and deal to that and come back. I want to see if I can take out that very sharp dent visible right here. The other piece is fine. If I can take that little point out, it'll probably look a lot better. Um, yeah, I can certainly see from the inside that this meter housing has been pushed down. So I want to get that back into shape if I can. And then we need to replace this plastic window that's, that's blown. And I'll either use that one here which has been used before and it has a crack in it and the surface isn't wonderful but it is intact and better than that uh, 
terrible broken example anyway. Right, time for some work off camera.